the number one long form writer that helps SEOs outrank competition at the click of a button using real time research and NLP. Start ranking content today with contentatscale.ai. Wix Studio, one end to end web creation platform for your agency to deliver exceptional work with absolute efficiency. Thank you. Um, yeah, hi everyone, my name is Andy. I'm head of SEO at Reflex Digital, and I'm here today to talk to you about how to stop overcomplicating your SEO strategies. And I put in brackets there how I've made millions with metadata alone. So it's really about how the fundamentals of SEO um, are still some of the strongest things that you can implement in your strategies today. But I'm gonna start with this. Can you just do some SEO? I love this phrase, it's one of my favorite things that clients like to ask. Um, it's the sort of thing when you're like, yeah, you know, I'll just flick some switches, turn some taps, I'll give Google a call, um, I can do that for you, I'll just do some SEO for you, no problem. Another red flag, though, for me is also, we only want to rank for this specific keyword. Um, there's probably plenty of others people can suggest as examples, but uh, this one is also maybe a highlight of maybe the client doesn't maybe have the best expectations in mind of what their strategy might be. But why does somebody ask that? It's not because they're being annoying or trying to wind us up, um, it's more likely that they simply, they don't know. Uh, think about it if, in relation to, if you take your car to a garage, for example, you might not know um, what's wrong with it. You might ask the same sort of question, can you just fix it for me? So don't just say yes to that request. The client's not always right. So for example, if you were to follow that client um, strategy request, think about the situation of what about when you achieve that goal, you do rank for that keyword, but actually doesn't make the money that they're hoping for. Uh, it doesn't match the amount they're spending on their SEO. It's uh, gonna be a bit of an awkward conversation, isn't it? But you might go, but we do what you asked. It doesn't really add up, and doesn't, doesn't, uh, doesn't make the difference. So you need to really be owning your own SEO strategy. So I'm gonna tell you a story. Um, I just did some SEO here. Uh, the pink line here is organic traffic. And you can see over time, this is week by week data here. They're making a million and a half a week uh, already, some good numbers, but you can see that after having implemented some good strategy, they're making three million a week. Um, and it's with some simple strategy we did this. So what I'd like to focus on with my strategy is these low effort, high impact results. So anything that's in that easy win section, um, anything that's maybe site wide that you can implement, or it's just really quick and easy to do, but it's gonna have that high value kind of goes without saying. But sometimes those client requests can end up in that high effort, low reward uh, zone. So really, I don't want to move out of that top left zone until I've ticked off all of those things in there. So to emphasize, get the low effort, high impact tasks in early. It does a few things. Um, one is it builds trust with the client, it shows that you can do it, and it allows you to optimize the details later on when they've got those uh, maybe specific pages, specific targets in mind. Some made up data here, but just to kind of emphasize the point really, if you're that following that purple line, that might be the client strategy or the I don't only want to opt rank for this keyword strategy, you might achieve that goal, but it's gonna plateau quite early and you're gonna end up with maybe running out of ideas or needing to do the same sort of things again, it's, it's slower. So if you can achieve the pink line, so optimizing maybe site-wide things, things that are gonna affect multiple pages, all the, the whole site, I'd much rather be in that situation when my budget's getting reviewed, asking the client for more budget or to carry on uh, working with us. But what are some examples then? Because I can't just say, yeah, just optimize the easy things. So some low effort, high value op uh, opportunities to look for. One thing for me is templating your meta titles, which optimizing meta titles in general, it's one thing that's really uh, overlooked, especially in the very complicated world that we, we live in with SEO today. So I've got some examples here of how you might template your meta titles. This one here, it's a made up site. Uh, they sell gummy bears. Uh, it's 50 kilos of gummy bears, so quite a lot. Um, and I've got some real search data. There's a wholesale gummy bears and bulk buy gummy bears. So there's search volume for that. And you can see that our meta title is, it's okay. It's gonna rank for the, the broad term probably of gummy bears, but it's not gonna hit these, these markets here. And obviously these are critical to us because they're actually purchase intent keywords as well. So really uh, very valuable. We could use templating to affect this page, but also every product page on our site. So what if we changed it to be bulk buy wholesale products name, for example? 
apply that same templating to all of your product pages, and suddenly you're not just optimizing the meta title for that one page, but your entire product selection. It also means it's future-proofing it. Next time your client adds a product or you add a product, it's gonna have that optimization in place. It's not necessarily gonna hit the mark every single time, but it's gonna be a lot better than you started off with. Another example, this one's a garden plant wholesale or seller. It's, it's again, just a made up example. Garden plants is quite interesting, actually. Um, you often find that people add the word online to the end of their search terms when they're making these kind of uh, requests. When you search for a garden plant by name, you often find that you end up with horticultural advice, maybe it's garden as well, comes up. So people add the word online to so that they're uh, looking for a purchase intent. And they obviously add the word buy as well. But again, we can apply the same logic. This doesn't apply only to garden plants, it applies to all of the different species as well. So quite interesting. But again, apply the templating by category name online. It's really simple. But again, that means when you add a new category page, job done. It's always got that optimization in mind. And you might go, yeah, sure. Like some of those examples are really so low search volume. They're not going to make that much difference, surely. Well, remember this graph, just doing some SEO. Well, all I did here was templates and meta titles, and honestly, nothing else. So some examples of, the, of how it's actually performed. This is average keyword data um, for all of their uh, key terms. There are a food wholesaler, this was an example. So they averagely ranked for all wholesale keywords in around 75th position and moved to 55th. And you might go, yeah, whatever, that's not a huge gain. But it is, because this has across thousands of keywords. So some examples moved, for example, places where they were ranking third to first, second to first, but in some cases also went from not ranking at all to now being performing on the first page with just that meta title adjustment. That meant we could then go, okay, next step is now we've, we've done that, that's the very basic. Where can we go to from here? We can now look at content and other ways of optimizing that page. In terms of results, 61 million pounds year on year from doing that change. And I promise there was no other change at all in that time, just templated metadata. We refined it a little bit over time, but it's seriously just that. But what else is there? There's meta titles, sure, but there's, there's more things you can take with that kind of logic in mind. So templating your H1 tags can be another easy example. I pulled out one example here from Joe Malone's website, just found it as a good, good, good case study. Um, this particular page, it ranks seventh for citrus perfume. Decent search volume, but you can see where I'm going with this. Currently, just says the word citrus. What if we template that now? All their fragrance pages have the word category name perfumes in mind. Suddenly, again, they're optimizing for all of those. And again, that ranks seventh, so make that change. Probably going to be fifth, fourth, I'd have thought. Another example, uh, this is from The Week. They are a, they're well known for their political, political cartoons, that's easy to say. Um, they rank second for the word cartoons See what I'm getting at here? Um, easy change, make the H1 tag be political cartoons, page title political cartoons. It's a super simple change, definitely in that low effort, high value bracket. But what about some technical opportunities as well, because that's all good just be uh, the on-page optimization there, but what about technical things? One in particular I like is image compression. It's Paul Furby. Um, a lot of websites nowadays, especially if you're on a CMS like WordPress, for example, you can install a plugin that will allow you to compress your images across the entire site. And again, that definitely fits into that low effort, high value uh, bucket as well. You can click a button and optimize all your images in one go, whether that's a 3% gain, 30% gain in, in image size. It's a site-wide optimization that took you seconds to do. So again, really don't overlook it. Some other examples, image alt tags, especially if you don't have any, Lots of sites find that they just don't have an image alt tag in place. What can you do to template that? Can you use the product name, the category name, the blog post article name if it's a featured image, for example? Or can you just work your way through them? It's not difficult to, to add image alt tags. Sitemap issues as well. And if you've got a sitemap full of 404s or non-indexable pages, not a difficult thing. But the more you, think, more you can spoon feed Google, the more you're going to see performance. And again, if it's a 1% gain site-wide, it's worth the time. Hreflang setup as well. If you're pointing users to, to pages that aren't in their uh, location, again, it's absolutely going to be in that high value bracket because why would you be sending, for example, a US user to a UK page? It's definitely worth the time. 
And the last one here is internal linking, or rather site-wide internal linking is what I like to look for, one of my favorite things to do. Um, if you can find ways of increasing internal linking to priority pages from, let's say, a text block that exists on multiple pages or a widget that exists on multiple pages, suddenly you can be adding a link to that target page, not just from one page, but from every single page that includes that particular widget. So if you've got a product page, for example, maybe you can find a way to tie it into some of your help and advice guides or important um, other pages. A good strategy isn't enough. Or rather, what are my learnings from some of this? I showed you that data earlier about the templated metadata making 61 million pounds. But it could have been seconds to implement, and it really, really wasn't. So getting shit done, it's really difficult if people aren't on board with it. So remember that, can't you just do some SEO guy? Um, if you've got the best strategy in mind, it's not going to actually line up with them and if they don't appreciate how much money it's going to make them. So red tape takes time to get through, especially if you need development work or if the client needs to do something to invest in it. So we need to talk about forecasting. How can we demonstrate the value of what we're proposing to our client? So again, good strategy isn't enough. You need to be the, really show the expected uplift of your strategy. The way I like to forecast is with uh, giving the client three potential um, targets in mind, so a low, a medium, and high. That could be a percentage gain, or it could be a revenue target. I like to do it this way because it means that you end up with a low score where it's going to be, I know we can achieve this target. And it also gives you a medium and a high, the high being, uh, we can get here aspirationally if you carry on doing this work and develop with us. So it means you give a, a reasonable um, a, a scale, really, for the, to the client to look at. So to wrap up, uh, look for site-wide opportunities. Don't get stuck into your client-led strategies unless they're awesome. Have your own ideas. Get the low-effort, high-impact tasks in early. Forecasts to estimate your results. And lastly, shout about your results. If you've implemented that strategy, it's made that performance gain, make sure that you tell your client about it, vocalize that, make sure that when you get to um, renewing that retainer, they know, hey, that was my strategy, I did that. And that's me, thank you. Monthly reporting making you want to shove sharp things up your nose? Try Dragon Metrics the all-in-one SEO software with mind-blowing reporting tools.